this winter, Chicago experienced record breaking cold and freezing temperatures. So with the help of his family, one man offered help to his Morton Grove neighbors and it sparked an entire movement. He's this week's four star Chicagoan. Take a look. Kindness, gentleness, respect. Very into helping people, very into peace. Within just minutes, he said, how can I help you? What can I do? It's about humanity at large that we also need to take care of with God's blessings that he has given to us. My name is Sabil Ahmad and uh, I live in the city of Morton Grove. It cannot be stressed enough. Have a plan for your home, for your vehicle, before the extreme cold settles in. When we were watching the TV, the anchorman, he was saying that the weather is going to be really nasty. It will go to maybe minus 27 degrees and wind chill of like 65. The very first thought came to my mind is, how do I protect my family? The immediate second thought that came to my mind is, what about my neighbors? What about the lady who lives next to me? She's 95 years of age. Maybe they are poor people, maybe sick people, maybe old people. What about them? Who is going to help them? I don't have the phone numbers or emails of all the neighbors. So I got a paper from my printer and I wrote a note, Dear neighbor, greetings of peace. Neighbors are the ones to help each other. My family and I are available if you need assistance in picking up groceries, medicine, or the removal of snow. You are also welcome to drop in for hot tea and samosas. So we made about 40 copies and then stick it like inside the doors. I was not expecting a single person to call me, by the way. About five, six people, they call and they said, we really need help. We went there with the shovel, we cleaned up the place, and one more lady, she called, and she said, you know, I don't live in Morton Grove, I live in Park Ridge. I met him and his wife, and they were so kind to even bring me some yogurt, spinach, Osmog, she brought me a little plant. But beyond that, they brought a all-encompassing feeling of peace. It is part of my faith to make sure that the neighbors, like at least 40 to my right, 40 to my left, and across, you know, both sides, that I have to make sure that they have the basic necessities. Well, I figured, well, I'll call him and I'll actually pay him. I'd be happy just to have somebody get rid of the snow. And it's a way to reach out, and I think it's an old-fashioned way that people did things, because about 25, 26 years ago, I just, people did stuff like that all the time. That night when I went to the mosque, one person grabbed me and said, you know, Sabil, I'm really angry with you. I said, wow, you should be happy, right? No, he said, why didn't you tell me about this idea? I could have done the same thing. We could have reached more neighbors. We want to have a ripple effect like this, not just in Morton Grove, not just in Chicago, but all over the USA. I hope he goes very far. I hope that he continues to encourage people throughout even our nation to do this. We can live as brothers and sisters, not just peacefully, but in loving peace. Please welcome this week's four star Chicago and Dr. Sabil Ahmed. Thank you. How are you? Doctor. Yes, thank you so much for being here. And thank, thank you for you. what you are doing to bridge the gap. I think in this current climate in our country, in our world, in our cities, in our neighborhoods, this gap needs to be bridged and you're doing it. Thank you. Yeah, what drives you to do this? What, what, is, it, is it about breaking stereotypes? Is it about showing that we're all human beings and we all should be caring for one another? You know, there were multiple angles I was looking at this activity. First and foremost, there are many sick and old and disabled neighbors around my block. Mm -hmm. Then I thought maybe there are more people who may need help. So that was the first motivation. Second motivation is that there is so much Islamophobia, misunderstandings about each other, especially about Muslims and Islam. So we want our neighbors to meet the Muslim neighbors and let them know that Muslims are good people. Islam is a good faith. Come and meet with us, eat with us. Mm -hmm. yes. right. What has this done for the Muslim community? It has really motivated the Muslim community, by the way, because many a times we always see these negative images, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. If a Muslim does something, it just becomes a major news. But we want to show to the media, to all of us, that we are all brothers and sisters in humanity. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And we are. What has this activity taught you and your family and your kids? You know, second reason I did this with my family is to show to my children, to, to the youth, that it's not enough for you to take care of yourself, your neighbors or your brothers and sisters. Right. You should take care of them. You know, drop down your uh, gadgets, <laughs> you know, drop down your fortnight, pick up a shovel, Fortnite, yeah. <laughs> and help your neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. right. And this yeah. is something that you want to see spark really around the country. You are gonna, you're going to continue this year round? Yes, yes, obviously there is no expiration date on this. There is no, by the way, right? 
Yeah. It has to be year round. As long as I'm alive, my family is alive. These are the teachings my faith teaches me. Yeah. So it has to be year round and lifelong. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. And you really wanted to do this too as a way just to meet your neighbors. Because sometimes course. I think in neighborhoods, we come in our house, we go in the garage, we, go, we don't necessarily interact. So have you met some new best friend neighbors? You know, there is so much uh, misunderstanding if we don't know each other. But once we meet each other, we will find out that there is so much in common between us. And we have met many neighbors that we don't know. You know, we just say hi to them from far yep. away. So they came to our house. We went to their house. Uh, the barriers are now broken. So hopefully we will realize the commonality and working on the com commonality, we can make better humanity. Absolutely. Yeah, you. And you're not only a great example for your children, you're not only helping your neighbors, but you're also helping the homeless. You have these blessing bags. I'm holding one right here, and I think we have some video of them too. Tell us a little bit about this and, and how it's helping the homeless. You know, it's really important. Unfortunately, 50 million people are below the poverty line in this country. And when I was driving from Chicago, from Skokie to here, there were many homeless people with the signs and we have all seen this. Mm -hmm. It just breaks our heart. So our family and many Muslim families in the mosque, MCC, we came together and we made 100 blessing bags. It has all the basic necessities. It has a toothbrush and toothbrush and, uh, and cap and gloves and socks. And this is just a start, by the way. We made 100 of these and we will distribute through the Muslim community to the rest of Chicago, and we will make more, inshallah, God willing. Yes, yes. Dr. Sabil, thank you so much. Yes. Great work, what you're doing. And you're inspiring a lot of people.